Hello everyone, good morning. And uh, in this video, uh, which is going to be uh, the last two or three video clips remaining in the ECG um, sort of program. So in this video, we'll talk about the right bundle branch block, which is again a very important uh, thing to be diagnosed from the ECG paper. Mm -hmm. Though it is not uh, that dangerous for the patient, but it's important to understand how it happens and how you can find it out from the ECG paper. And at the end of the video, if you think the video is good and you like it, then do press the like button. Try to share it. And if you haven't subscribed the channel, do it. And also press the bell icon. That will help, help you to get the latest videos, even after the ECG series. And that will also help me to grow the channel further because uh, it's going to go even higher uh, during the past, uh, uh, in the future. So thank you once more for watching the video. And if you are watching it, try to watch it completely because that's the only way you can understand what we are going to talk about in the video. Thank you once more. So in order to understand the concept of the right bundle branch block, which is RBBB, the first point is to understand what is RBB or right bundle branch. Right bundle branch is a branch. It's on the right side and it belongs to the bundle part of the conduction system. So, if we uh, revise the conduction system, everything starts from the sinoatrial node, which is here. Then it goes through the intraatrial uh, tracts, including the, this one, which is the batchment tracts, and depolarizes the atria. From there, impulse enters into the AV node, which delays it for a uh, short time. And then it enters into this part of the conduction system, which we call the bundle of his. And from here, it goes towards three sides. One very small branch goes towards the septum and septum is depolarized before these two uh, ventricles are depolarized. And the, along with that, this impulse also enters the right bundle branch and the left bundle branch. And at the end of these bundle branches, there are Purkinje fiber which are embedded into the ventricular muscle. And here, when the ventricular muscle are depolarized, then there is formation of the uh, QRS complex uh, as a result of this conduction system. Now, uh, this uh, uh, whole conduction system ends up in the formation of this very finely, uh, fine morpho morphology of the P, QRS and T waves. P is the first uh, positive deflection on the ECG paper and it represents the atrial depolarization. Depolarization of the atrial muscle which happens as a result of impulse entry uh, from the SA node into the atria. From there, it goes through the conduction system and the bundle branches uh, into the ventricular muscle. When they depolarize, there is a formation of the uh, QRS complex. This first uh, downward deflection is Q, then it's the R and then it's S. And when the ventricle, they repolarize, uh, why, what we mean by deep, uh, repolarization, we have discussed in the previous videos, when the inside of the cells will become negative and outside will stay positive, this is what we call the repolarization. And that ventricular repolarization is represented on the ECG paper as a, as a T wave. Now, as a result of the uh, ventricular depolarization, a narrow QRS complex is produced. Why we call it narrow? Because the duration of the QRS complex normally when there is no blockage in either of the right or the left bundle branch or anywhere in the conduction system, if when there is no blockage and the uh, source of the conduction system or the impulse is from the SA node, sinoatrial node or from the upper level of the AV node which we call the junctional uh, pacemaker, then the QRS complex will be narrow. What we mean by narrow? it will be less than three small boxes in duration. And we had seen in the previous uh, videos that the duration of one small box is 0 0.04 second and the duration of the three small boxes will be 0 0.04 into three. That makes it 0.12 second. So the normal QRS complex in absence of any bundle branch block will be less than three small boxes or it will be less than 0.12 second. Question arises if there is a block on the, uh, in the in the right bundle branch block, in the right bundle branch rather, if there is a block here, which uh, of the 12 ECG leads will be the most representative of that change? This is very important. So because it's located on the anterior side of the heart wall, 
so the chest leads are going one of the chest leads or one or two of the chest leads are going to be the one which can represent this change most prominently now if, let's revise how we place the chest leads we go, first locate the suprasternal notch come underneath uh, downwards and here is the angle of Louis or monobrum sterni right uh, parallel to it are the second intercostal space we descend down to the third and then to the fourth intercostal space in the fourth intercostal space on the right side of the sternum we place c1 on the left side of the sternum in the fourth intercostal space we place c2 then we do not place c3 before we place we had placed the c4 which we place in the fifth intercostal space on the left side of the sternum in the mid clavicular plane this is the mid clavicular line not nipple nipple can move around so better you do not follow the apex no, neither the uh, nipple but fifth intercostal space left side and mid clavicular line and in between c2 and c4 uh, you place the c3 wherever it goes actually then c5 is placed in the fifth intercostal space in the anterior axillary line and c6 is placed in the fifth intercostal space in the mid axillary line that makes c1 and c2 the closest chest leads uh, to the right bundle branch they are located in the vicinity or neighborhood of the uh, right bundle branch and whatever the changes on this part of the myocardium and the conduction system will be uh, captured most significantly by C lead C1 and C2 and here we will talk about the C1 only which uh, we see on the ECG paper uh, as V1. We, when we place it, it is as a C1 because it is uh, inscribed over there but when you get it on the ECG paper, it is as a V1. So if uh, lead V1 is important when we are to talk about the right bundle branch block then let's talk about the normal morphology of v1 now we are talking not in the presence of the right bundle branch block but without it if you look at the lead v1 it's a predominantly negatively deflected chest leads and there is a reason to it so here you see p it's because of this atrial depolarization then comes a very small r wave which is a positively deflected why now, if you look at here, this is bundle of his and this is right bundle branch, this is left bundle branch. But along with the, that, there is another very small branch which goes towards the septum. And when the wave of, when the impulse uh, is uh, traveling down the conduction system, it initially or before even, uh, before it enters into the right and the left bundle branch, it enters into the septum and it causes the depolarization of the septum. Uh, the waves of depolarization of the septum goes towards V1 and V2 and away from V5 and V6. So, when the this septal depolarization is going towards V1 and V2 because of its positive traveling towards V1 and V2, it generates an R wave and because its ma uh, mass is quite small, so it makes a very small positively deflected R wave in lead V1 and V2 and here we are talking about the V1. Then, this wave of depolarization goes not only into the right bund uh, bundle branch but also the left bundle branch uh, almost simultaneously normally and it, de it depolarizes the uh, both right and the left uh, ventricle because the way uh, the mass of the left ventricle is more than the right ventricle so the wave of depolarization of the left ventricle becomes more significant as compared to the uh, right uh, uh, ventricle wave of depolarization and here normally we see the wave of depolarization of the left ventricle is going away from v1 and v2 that is why and we have the rule of the thumb that when a lead ecg leads looks at the wave of depolarization which is going away from it it generates a negatively deflected wave so a v1 is sitting here and the wave of depolarization of the left myocardium or left ventricle which is more in magnitude is going away from the v1 so it generates s wave so s is because of the left ventricular depolarization which is going away from lead uh, v1 and the t is because of the ventricular repolarization so this is the normal morphology of the uh, chest lead v1 on the ecg paper now in comparison with the normal let's see what are the changes happening in the right bundle branch block situation now here is the block this is the block 
now it is not allowing the impulse to pass across this block so wave uh, impulse came from the sa node went to the atria cause caused the atrial depolarization which generated a uh, p wave then it entered into the av node and it generated pr segment from here it went to the bundle of his and now it was post to, uh, first it entered into the septal branch and went to the septum caused its depolarization which made a very fine small positively deflected r wave as before because the event of the blockage is post septal depolarization now it was supposed to pass on the in, uh, in, into the both right and the left uh, branches but there is a block on the right side so it goes as previously as normally into the left side of the conduction system it goes towards the posterior fascicle and anterior fascicle of the left bundle uh, branch it uh, enters into the purkinje fiber and uh, which are embedded into the ventricular muscle and it causes the ventricular depolarization and the wave of depolarization of the uh, left uh, ventricle makes s wave which is negatively diffracted like the normal v1 so there is a r wave there is an s wave as it was normally but there is a problem now there is no impulse uh, transmission across the right bundle branch because there is a blockage because of ischemia because of any other problem like the fibrosis and any other problem it may be age related uh, so what happens that this impulse which has gone into the uh, left myocardium or the left ventricle then it finds its way through the muscles Uh, it jumps from one muscle to the other and then it enters into the right myocardium and it also depolarizes the muscles of the right myocardium or the right ventricle now it's taking it more time so that is making the qrs complex broad and by the time it reaches there it had made the qrs complex broader than the three small boxes now what happens that when we normally we were supposed to end everything here now v1 looks at the wave of depolarization of the its own right myocardium or right ventricle coming towards it when the v1 is looks at the wave of depolarization of the right myocardium which happened as a result of impulse transmission through the muscles of the left myocardium it generates another positively deflected r wave which we call the r prime so that gives a pattern specific pattern in lead v1 and v2 and here we are talking about the lead v1 which we call the rsr pattern or rabbit ear pattern so this is a very characteristic pattern of the right bundle branch block now the right bundle branch block did not allow the impulse transmission through the bundle branch but this impulse will come back to the right myocardium after it had depolarized the left myocardium or the left ventricle through the normal left bundle branch and then through the muscles it will come towards the right myocardium and will depolarize it that wave of depolarization of the right myocardium now will be going towards v1 which will generate an additional r wave and this wave of depolarization of the left myocardium or the left ventricle which was going away from lead v1 had already generated a negatively deflected s wave so this gives it a rabbit ear pattern r r s r prime pattern and finally we can conclude that the ecg criteria for the uh, right bundle branch block is a qrs broader than three small boxes or a qrs broader than 0.12 second and there will be an rsr a rabbit ear pattern in lead v1 or it may be in lead v2 some people do say and yes there is a slurring of the s wave in lead v5 and v6 but remember one thing the main aim of ecg on, on this channel is is to give you the basics without making it complicated because if you look at the ecg paper and there is a broadening of the qrs complex the first and the foremost thing which should hit you is the broadening of the qrs complex whenever there is a broadening of the qrs complex which is more than 0.12 seconds in duration then you are to look for a change in the v1 or v2 in case of the right bundle branch block or a change in the lead v5 or v6 in case of left bundle branch block which we are going to talk in the next video 
So, if you find a broad QRS complex, try to look for the RSR pattern. Try to look for double notch in V1 or V2. That will give you the definition of the uh, right bundle branch block. Then you try to look for whether there is ischemia of the right coronary artery, whether there is a, some sort of uh, fibrosis, age-related changes going on in the patient. So this is a very important thing to uh, remember.